Hello everybody, welcome to the Tube. So much is going on on tonight's show. Let's start it. Bad news for pirates around the world. Mega upload founder Kim.com is set to be extradited to the United States to face charges including copyright infringement and money laundering. A court in New Zealand has decided. .com was originally uh, indicted in the United States back in 2012 with the Department of Justice claiming that Mega Upload, the web storage service he created and operated, cost music and film studios in excess of 500 million dollars as people used it to download pirated songs and movies. He was arrested in a high-profile armed raid on his Oakland home soon after the charges were leveled against him, but it's taken almost four years for the New Zealand courts to reach a decision on whether to send .com to America. One of the defense attorneys involved in the case indicated that .com and his associates plan to appeal the case in New Zealand's high court, so the drama is not yet over. But it does seem that Kim is running out of luck, so thank you for all the movies we have downloaded, sir. Hope it was all worth it. The company that invented the car might be teaming up with Google to invent the car once again. If early reports prove true, Ford and Google will announce the development of a self-driving car initiative at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas early next month. Yahoo Odos reported that the two companies are creating an independent joint venture, a structure that protects Google and Ford from potential liability to produce self-driving cars. It's said to be part of a non exclusive deal, meaning that Google could partner with other automakers as well. Last week, Ford received approval to test autonomous cars on public Californian roads, where Google's efforts have been focused. As a reminder, here is Google's self-driving car in action. There's no steering wheel in the way. <laughs> it was a big decision for us to go and start building our purpose-built vehicles for this. And really, they're, they're prototype vehicles. They were a chance for us to, to explore what does it really mean to have a self-driving vehicle. But in the small amount of time we've been working on it, you know, we have functional prototypes, and that's exciting. Oh, it's really cool. It was like really kind of a space age experience. Oh, okay. All right. We're like three. Yeah. You sit, relax. You do not do nothing. It knows when it needs to stop. It knows when it needs to go. <laughs> it actually rides better than my own car. 2015 can be called the year of database breaches as we saw many private data of users flows through the internet. But it seems one of the biggest and possibly strangest breaches was just discovered. Over the weekend, security researcher Chris Vickery told that he'd uh, discovered a leaked database of more than 3.3 million user accounts for Scenario Town, the owner of Hello Kitty. Yes, 3.3 million Hello Kitty fans private data has been compromised. The breach data included full names encoded by birth dates, email addresses, and encrypted passwords, along with password reset questions and answers. Scenario said, uh, Sanrio said it fixed the breach, but it's too late for the millions of Hello Kitty fans who just wanted to show their love to the weird Japanese cartoon, teaching you that the things you love are the ones that eventually will embarrass you publicly online. And now it's time for something that will warm your cold, cold hearts. The implications of the economic digital divide in Israel on underprivileged youth are especially hard. That is exactly the reason why a non-profit organization called Machshava Tova is organizing tech training to undeserved populations, hoping to narrow the gap. But even they did not anticipate what will happen to a group of youngsters from Lod who, with the program managed to, uh, managed to open their own startup, would uh, win a national competition and eventually found themselves in New 
New York pitching their new company. That story is the heart of a new documentary called Startup Lawn. Let's see the promo before we dive into the story. I'm Aaron, I'm 17, from the city of Mahir Lod. And I'm the director of the city of Find It. Hello, I'm Aaron, I'm from Ramle, from the city of Mahir Lod. And I'm from the city of Find It. And my job is a manager. Hello, I'm Aaron, I'm from the city of Mahir Lod. אבי חזקאייב, אני אבי חזקאייב, אני בן 17, מאי רמלה, ואני המנכ"ל של פיינל. With me in the studio is Didi Ben Shalom, Director of Project Development at Machshava Tova. Good evening. Good evening. So tell me about Machshava Tova. Machshava Tova is a non-profit organization established in Israel uh, by a group of educators and high-tech employees mm -hmm. that realize that technology can be a huge leap ahead for underprivileged uh, populations in Israel. We work today with uh, youth at risk, as you've mentioned, with children that come from poor neighborhoods, people with disabilities, and people who are seeking employment. Mm -hmm. And all these populations can be greatly uh, empowered by learning computer skills that you and I can take very for granted, mm -hmm. and for them it's a whole different world. Interesting. And, and what's uh, what are the main difficulties uh, you you have when uh, when coming to this uh, kids with another privileged background? A lot of fear. Mm -hmm. um, the computer is really perceived as something dangerous and something that you can harm. If I accidentally touch this button or that button, I can actually cause damage to the computer. So they'll, it'll take a long time until they approach. Also, very uh, low self-esteem. My mm -hmm. abilities won't allow me to acquire this knowledge, to use it to my benefit. With grown-ups, it can be sometimes the children. The children are very far ahead in use of technology, and then the parents feel that they don't really have legitimacy in asking to use the computer in the house. Mm -hmm. So every population has a different a uh, different challenge when they come to to our computer classes. Uh, let's talk about this group from uh, from Lud. Who are they? W what is their startup? Uh, four amazing teenagers. They participated in a program Machshava Tova started seven years ago called Ecotech. It's a program to teach youth at risk computer skills and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. The entrepreneurship uh, program is called NIFTY. It's an international program in Israel. It's operated by JDC and NIFTY Partners in Israel. And they have more than a 1,000 kids participating in this every year. Every group of four or five kids invent a completely new product and are then judged on their uh, business plan. Mm -hmm. So these uh, four kids uh, were in our program, and they developed a little, tiny little sticker called Find It. It's really small. It's the size of maybe a grain of rice. A sticker or what? It's a tiny little sticker. Sticker? Yes. Okay. The size of a grain of rice yes. that you can put on things that you usually lose. It can be your favorite cup. It can be your sunglasses. It can be My your keys. car keys. Yeah. Exactly. Things that we misplace. Mm -hmm. And once you put that little sticker, you have an app on your phone that will find it everywhere you go. So if I can't find my sunglasses, I go into my phone, and we never lose our phone. Mm -hmm. I go into my phone, I find my uh, sunglasses. Of course, they wear, I always leave them in the mm -hmm. refrigerator, and I go and get them. So it's an amazing little gadget. It's very cheap. They mm -hmm. manage to work with HB and really create a very cheap uh, pilot for, for their uh, pro project, and um, yeah, it can be used by pretty much everyone. Wow, interesting. And what is NFTA? I mean, what exactly did they win there? Well, NIFTY is this international program for youth at risk, mm -hmm. uh, teaching them entrepreneurship mm -hmm. skills. So there were, uh, in Israel, a thousand kids that participated in this competition. And these four kids that we saw in the promo actually won uh, the big prize, which is going to New York and participating in the international 
competition. In that competition, there were 144 different groups from all over the world, mm -hmm. each of them pitching their idea to high-tech people, to investors, to people who can really give them important input about how to move on with really becoming a startup. Yeah, and I know you weren't with them in New York, but what can you tell me about their trip? It was really flagbergasting. They were so excited. Um, we had to take them to have their passports made because most of them haven't left the country ever before. Mm -hmm. So from nothing to New York. Mm -hmm. And they had um, just this wonderful opportunity to be in a really nice hotel and go to a really nice conference and wear really nice clothes like you have. No. <laughs> and they had to, of course, practice their English, which was a big challenge, mm -hmm. and practice really standing and pitching there their idea. So they had to have their 15 second elevator pitch and they also had to have the opportunity to speak for 10 and 15 minutes and explain their business plan. Mm -hmm. So it was a really long journey in preparing this. Uh, do we believe that the, this will become a product that uh, people... Absolutely. Yeah? Yes, I'm waiting for it. I can't wait. Yes. Um, okay, and what's next for your program? Well, uh, we have a lot of challenges ahead. Machshava uh, Tova means good thought mm -hmm. in, uh, in Hebrew. And we really want to see how we can expand our programs and reach more and more teenagers across the country. We want to work with uh, Orthodox, with Arabs, with people who made Aliyah to Israel, with every population that can uh, use this uh, opportunity to learn a new skill and be exposed to a new world. Sounds amazing. Thank you very much for all the good work. My pleasure. And for being here. Of course. Okay, we're moving on. You may never be a lion tamer, but you still have a chance to be a robot tamer. During a fellowship at Autodesk's Pier 9 workshop, Madeline Gannon combined motion capture technology with a robotic arm to create an interactive system that reads human motions and responds to them accordingly. The robot sees with a Vacon motion camera system paired with reflective wearable markers that tell the robot where to look. The control software Ganon developed acts as an uh, interpreter, translating human motions into instructions for the robot. Watch Ganon with her robot, once enemy, now a friend. For a long time, industrial robots have been the culprit of automation and replacing human labor. Basically, all the easy tasks to automate have been automated. Now what we're working on is um, using these tools to enhance or augment human labor. And that to me is very exciting. Industrial robots are really fantastic CNC machines. You put a different tool at the end of the arm and all of a sudden they can do a whole different thing. So in the morning you can be doing spot welding, in the evening you can be doing painting. It's just highly adaptable. Another thing that I'm really working towards is finding ways to bring these machines out of factories and into live environments. So onto construction sites or onto film sets. There's chance for unpredictable objects like people to be moving into the environment. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to build the system to give this robot eyes so that it could actually see me and we can safely collaborate in a shared space. Oh, the robot whisperer. Okay, here's an example of a campaign gone wrong. The New South Wales government's uh, strong sloth campaign that attended, uh, attended to uh, warn teenagers of the dangers of sustained marijuana use. The clips from the campaign, well, they became viral instantly and for a good reason, sloths are amazing. Okay, time's up. Pens down. Delilah. Pens down, Delilah. Mm. Stoner sloth. Jason? Could you pass the salt, please, darling? Mm. Mm. Jason, the salt. Mm.
Wow, I love it when stoners are the creative, secret people doing the campaigns for the anti-drug companies and they manage to actually convince the anti-drug companies that this is a good campaign, though they laugh and laugh and laugh in their hearts. I love it. Christmas is a time to meet friends, new and old alike. But whether you do, don't invite Darth Vader to your Christmas. It's just not worth it. And that's it. Show's over. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new show of The Tube by 24news.tv. That's our website. Goodbye.